Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices. And we are here today as a part of his world to rejoice, to give thanks, to acknowledge what God has done, what God, how God has shown up in our lives over this past year especially. So we have the choir with us today, which is wonderful. And then a little later in the service, Tim Dawson's going to be leading some music for us as well. And we are going to be spending the bulk of our time giving thanks, or at least a lot of our time giving thanks. And I trust you've come with something you can share that will encourage us in that. Um, we will have Brian Hench walking around with a handheld wireless microphone so you don't even have to leave the comfort of your seat as you share with the rest of us about the Lord. And on that point, let me say this. Um, first of all, those of us in this room will have a chance to, to see the ones who are sharing. If you're with us online today, if you would like to share something, you can put that in the comments section on Facebook and we'll be able to see that later on. So that would be great and an encouragement as well. Our focus in giving thanks will be on what God has been doing and how God has shown up, ways that we have seen the Lord active. And I know that sometimes people can be nervous about speaking in front of other people, so a few words about that. Um, first of all, this is a group of friends, so it's okay to, to go ahead and speak out. Um, secondly, when you speak, you are giving voice to what others are feeling. And that's an encouragement. It's also an encouragement to hear how you have, have observed God. And this is part of what we do together as a church. We encourage one another. And this is a one way of doing that. Not the only way, but a good opportunity for us. So I trust that uh, we'll hear many voices this morning as we lift up the Lord who has truly been at work among us over these past days, weeks, months, and year. Well, we're coming into this time from a range of experiences and circumstances. So let's start by just taking a breath and being here, focusing our attention on the Lord. Take advantage of this opportunity to worship together and to put our eyes on you, Lord, the great and good one who calls us together who makes life possible, who engages with us in so many ways. Lord, thank you for the rich privilege of being able to come together at a time like this to concentrate, to think again about who you are, what you've done, what you've promised. You're good and you're great and we're so grateful for this time together which we ask, on which we ask your blessing as we commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand for our call to worship? And the A at the last line there is going to be for all of us. From Lamentations 3, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Please be seated.
On this day of Thanksgiving, as we remember what God has done and how God has been active, we also want to speak out what we believe to be true. And so we join our voices with the many who have over the years affirmed through the Apostles' Creed their belief in God. So let us say the Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. This God is great. This God is good. And we affirm that each time we gather and many times through the week on our own and in the company of others. And so, let's take these next moments and share with one another ways that we have seen God at work and reasons for which we are thankful. And uh, Tom, okay. Let's let Brian come and bring the mic and then... I thank this church for all that is done for myself, my wife, our two sons over the years, starting with the fact that both of our sons were born prematurely. And when my wife was pregnant with Kyle, our second son, our first son had grown some, and since my wife had to stay in bed due to some early labor pains when Kyle was probably only three or four months in the womb. Members of this church volunteered to let me take Nathan to their house to be cared for until I was finished work and went and picked him up and took him home. Add on to that the fact that during that same amount of time, multiple times throughout each week, somebody from this church drove an evening meal to our house since Irene couldn't get out of bed for anything other than going to the bathroom. It let me come home and have a meal to serve to my family. And the final thing, which of course was a difficult thing to go through was the death of our son Kyle at the age of 19 and a half. And the support given, the prayers given from members of this church, um, members of the choir that I was a part of, 
donating money to help with any expenses related to his funeral. And Kevin Smith singing at the funeral that was held at Holy Name. Uh, this church has been a great support to myself, my wife, my family through the years. Today I look around this congregation and there's not one aisle with, that doesn't have a, a volunteer or a worker or someone who contributes to the church, some in unsung ways, some as elected people, some as, you know, musicians, but I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we're all here together and I pray that you all have a Thanksgiving that is meaningful to you in many ways. Well, I'm thankful that I have a job, yes, a job that includes every one of you. And that when I put a call out, that call is filled. Um, the gifts for the children at Aviana, done. I mean, hats, scarves, um, ice on the front porch, done. And it is an honor and a privilege to work in this job and have you guys actually answered the phone when I call. So thank you for being a true church. You don't know how much easier you've made my life, and I'm truly blessed. This is an important time for me uh, through November. I... Uh, celebrated the start of my 15th year in remission from brain cancer, which was November 15th. My wife and I celebrated our 43rd wedding anniversary, November 11th. And when I hit Christmas Eve of this year, it'll be 15 years, when I climbed from my coma to the person that I am now. And I'd also like to give thanks to a very amazing man whose name is Alfredo Quinones Hinjosa, who was my brain surgeon who saved my life. The day that I was operated on, there was five major brain procedures done that day. I was the only one that survived. And my brain surgeon, Dr. Uh, Alfredo Quinones, we called him Dr. Q, he came from Mexico as an immigrant, and he worked hard, and he happened to do welding, ornamental welding, for a doctor who pioneered these brain procedures. And he told Alfredo, God put a gift in your hand. You're not going to be a welder. I'm going to make a brain surgeon out of you and you're gonna rid mankind of brain cancer. So he got him through these colleges, started out, he had nothing, and he eventually made Harvard Medical where he graduated in the fifth percentile of his class. And his own family would told him he'd be nothing more than a migrant worker. In 2006, that migrant worker saved my life. So this is an important time for me. And when I awoke on Christmas Eve and my mind started working, that's when I was started to walk the path of God. And hopefully he, I'm still doing a good job so that I can thank him for saving my life. Thank you.
First of all, I want to thank the church. I want to thank all my friends here. Uh, so many friends I've made here over the years, and although my wife and I are visiting another church now, now we've made more friends, okay? We, the other church, they made us very welcome, and so we're making more church friends. So we're expanding the church friends we have here and the church friends, friends we had in another church, and uh, we miss you all. We really do, and uh, you've all been really, really good to us, and we really, really miss all the people here. So we want to thank you for all the friendship all the, the, over the years, and we're going to continue with it. We're just not going to be around as much, but we will be here. So thank you very much for everything over the years, and well, we'll be seeing you. Cindy and I, um, with our son Matthew, just recently celebrated the third anniversary of him receiving um, a donor liver after suffering the ravages of Wilson's disease, of copper poisoning of the liver for, for decades. The doctors are just overwhelmed with the progress that he's made. And they were so worried, and we were also. With the work that he does, he works with mentally and physically challenged adults. He's been exposed to COVID a couple of times through coworkers and, and uh, clients that they work with. And it's, we're so fearful of him catching it. But he's, um, his wife basically sanitizes him every time he comes home from work. <laughs> Um, he, he is so hardworking, and thanks to this church for all the prayers, the financial support during their recovery, and, and they're still recovering, uh, but they're doing well. So I want to let everybody know that they wish that they could be here, uh, but unfortunately, he works many weekends um, and double shifts, and they're so short-staffed. And of course, he's the, the one that's always volunteering to work extra time. Um, but um, we're so thankful to everyone. And if you haven't seen this puss here in this, this building for a couple of years now, <laughs> and, and that's part of the reason that we're so uh, concerned that even though we've been fully vaccinated, um, that we could catch it and be asymptomatic and give it to our son. So we really have to be careful. Um, so those that are um, um, susceptible to, um, or their immune system is susceptible to these things, we have to be cautious around them. So uh, again, I'd just like to thank everyone uh, for their support, their prayers, and we're blessed. Thank you. Let me read from Psalm 136. We're going to uh, move to some music now, and then we'll have some time to do some more sharing. This is Psalm 136, where the psalmist is very much aware of God's presence in life. And it's kind of a back and forth psalm. He says a line, and then there's a chorus. The chorus is, his love endures forever. I wonder if we could practice that for just a moment, because we're going to try this. His love endures forever. Psalm 136 says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. He is the one who alone does great wonders. Amen. Let's sing together.
Please have a seat. Others who'd like to share? Okay. Brian's coming. <laughs> to Paul Hepler. So pretty simple. Um, what hit me pulling in the parking lot today? <clears throat> was the people that came before us. Some of you are in this room, whether it's a year ahead of me or many years ahead of me. Uh, there's been some real, real things here. Uh, I think of my brother Steve, I think of the rudders behind here, how much of a miracle that is, that what we've been through and they're here. Um, the Beistels. Uh, but there was several for some reason gave me advice over the years and one of the things that is on my mind is <clears throat> that this church is gonna change, it's gonna grow, you're not gonna agree with it, you're gonna agree with it, stay here. It's a great place, join it, move forward. And I think that's what we're doing. And we're just trying to see how we can service our community, how we're supposed to reach out and, uh, you know, if you don't make changes and you sit still, sometimes you die, you know. But this church is moving forward and trying and reaching out. And I just wanted to thank the people that uh, I'm a good follower. Some people say I'm a good leader, but I followed an awful lot before I had any kind of idea how to step up and do something. And that's because of people before us here in this church, whether you know them or whether you don't. Because some of us here have been here 60 years, and there's been some people before us that, that just kind of never leave my mind. So that's who I'm thinking about. Parents, everything else. Yeah, kind of along those same lines, uh, Paul, I, I have a lot to be thankful for, um, and I'm sure we all do. But one of the things I, I wanted to say is that I'm thankful that we're providing new ways to worship and we're em embracing that, whether that's, you know, our Bible studies, the casual service, um, there's, there's new th opportunities on, on uh, the TV and, and different things with the online opportunities. So there's a lot of new ways to worship and I think we, we do need to embrace that so that we can, uh, you know, we can use that to help ourselves and we can use that to save others and that's that's what we're that's what we're here for um, but the one thing I guess overall you just, as we just kind of celebrate Thanksgiving and what we're thankful for um, I guess I'm thankful to God for the abilities and the resources that he's given to me to share with others so that somebody else can be thankful so as we celebrate Thanksgiving it's uh, I think it's, it's good to be thankful to be able to give so that somebody else can be thankful. I tried to decide when I was gonna talk, when I wasn't gonna sing because I know I'm gonna cry already. So, it, there's not really a good time, so I'm gonna do it now. Um, a couple of things, and I'll try to make this short, but the. Very most important thing I want to be thankful is for all the healthcare workers out there in the world, and I, I know a few of us have touched on that a little bit. But um, I've been a nurse for about 30 years. Um, obviously, the last few years we've been through some troubling times. Um, kind of along goes with my dad. Um, last week I went, went into the ER on Friday at 4:15. Don't ever do that ever. Um, there wasn't a place to sit, and I sat there and sat there. We didn't get a room until Saturday night. Um, and I went through so many different emotions throughout that whole wait in the ER. Um, I was mad. Um, I had my nurse claws on. I had my daughter claws on. Um, at times, I wanted to complain. I wanted to do whatever. And, and then I just sat and looked around. And it's a war zone there. Um, it really is. Um, the nurses, and you know, it, it's just crazy. Um, but they are there for a purpose. Um, they're there to help all of us, um, whether it's maybe not and maybe some of them are only doing what they can do, um, and that's kind of, but throughout that, I cried 
every other hour probably about something. Um, but God did bring me through. He had to because I don't. I was at the deepest level last week, um, and I, you know we did. Um, he did bring us through. We got a room, um, and then other things happened. Um, you know, one day at a time, um, and God will show the path. And then the next day, like they diagnosed my dad with prostate cancer, which, okay, that's, it's okay, but it's not the worst. Um, but it was just one more thing, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, how much more? Um, you know, but I can say as of last night, he's, I'd say, almost 90% better than he was last Sunday. Um, so that's something to be grateful for. Um, and all of you, everyone has given him so much cards and Mar poor Marilyn made soup and he wasn't home, but she's going to remake it, um, you know, when he does come home. And I know all of you have been, you know, looking at that, but um, I just want to, and, and thankful to be helping me too, because sometimes, you know, as a, I'm a healthcare worker and a daughter, it's really hard to be in there. And then at work, I go to work, the healthcare part of it, we are so short staffed, it's like, like everywhere. Um, and Julie, um, I think most of you know Julie works for me and with me, um, and I, I couldn't live without her at work. And she's a healthcare worker too, and we're we're doing it together. But somebody's pushing us all through together because we would never make it Monday through Friday working 12-hour shifts. But we are doing it, um, and so somebody up there is looking down on us, and you know, and hoping to give us a light at the end of the tunnel. But. For all those nurses, doctors, and, and even just caregivers that are home, thank you for everything, and thank you for wearing your mask and getting vaccinated and, you know, taking care of, you know, if you needed to be. Um, the whole new ma vaccine mandate has put a whole nother stress on me. Um, it's a good thing, but it, it's very stressful to some people, and now we're going to go through a whole nother round of emotions and things like that, but I just want to thank um, all the healthcare workers out there, whatever title they may have, um, because they're very important, and, and, you know, just to keep everybody, you know, in everybody's prayers, so thank you very much. So much to be thankful for. Um, I'm thankful for all the things that were mentioned earlier and the, the people that mentioned them um, as part of our church family. Uh, but I'm going to pick one specific. Uh, yesterday was uh, our newest grandbaby's six-month birthday, if you have a six-month birthday. And during her last trimester, um, the doctors became very concerned about uh, some conditions that they were seeing and they had to monitor very closely uh, through the delivery and early in her young life and uh, we're very blessed and happy to say that uh, at this point in time she looks completely healthy and normal and uh, has uh, everything ahead of her so we are blessed and thankful. Nancy Tumas online says, I am thankful to the hospice community and my church family. a lot of great stories and thank you all for sharing um, so obviously the main theme is thanks but I, I also heard a couple of things in there that I think need to be reinforced and that is one is encouragement uh, I hear so many we hear so many great stories uh, of thanks and and being thankful for one another and when you're in a church uh, one of the reasons you come here is to encourage one another and sometimes we lose sight of that. And if you ever get discouraged, think about the fact that you come here for encouragement 
and we as a congregation lift each other up and encourage each other. You've heard some people say, oh, I don't need to go to church, I can stay home and I can worship on my own. Well, that's fine, but think of this group of people here, this congregation. We're all here to encourage one another. So thank, thank you for doing that. The other thing is giving. Um, heard a lot of stories about people giving of themselves, of their the gifts. God has given each of you a gift or gifts very special to you that you can use to help with that encouragement process and to help with this church. And so, like, a great story about the, the doctor who was, you know, the ornamental welder and another guy saying, I'm going to make you a, a surgeon. That's a great story. And there are so many other stories that you share. They're excellent stories. And think about how you know, God has, you've answered, you, you've, you've done the first step. You, you've answered God's call to be here in church. What are the next things you can do? What, what else is God calling you to do and, and in ways that you can give to this church, to this community, to each other? So I encourage you to think about that. So, um, but, you know, giving of yourselves. And it, it's, it's refreshing to hear these stories that you've all shared. So thank you very much. Let's, let's go like this. Um, so we'll have continued opportunities over coffee after the service uh, to share some of the stories like Ray is encouraging us to do. And uh, we are going to move to some more music. So I'll let you go there. Thank you. All right. Now I'll get to share my thanks. So God's love endures forever. Right? And I certainly want to say, you know, thank you to God for that love that he has shown me. I know I'm new to most of you, and it's wonderful to hear your stories. It's wonderful to hear where you've come from. Uh, for me, last year, last two years have been years of, years of transition for me. When I turned 50, uh, my daughter went off to college. Lots of changes in my life. But the one thing that endured was God's love.
Please be seated. And we are going to skip right over the homily. I'm going to give an extended benediction so that we have some time to pray for one another. And we're going to do that now. And as I lead us, please join your voices with mine to lift before the Lord those who are on our minds and in our hearts. You've heard some things this morning, other things you have brought with you. Let's lay them all before the Lord now. With grateful hearts, God, we come thanking you for the way that you're at work in us, through us, around us. We continue to pray as you guide us, Lord. We pray for government leaders, to pray for your church, to pray for this church. And Lord, in a few minutes, we'll be talking more about this church, and we continue to ask for your guidance as we talk and act and plan and remember. And we would bear in mind how faithful you have been and how you continue to give us gifts and resources of various kinds. May we be faithful in using these to your glory. We pray for people around us, our friends, our family members, people at work, people at school, people in our neighborhoods. Lord, for those that are dealing with health issues and money issues, those who are facing decisions, those who are dealing with relationships, those who are worn down by the cares that they have. Lord, would you continue to minister by your spirit and through your people. And we pray for ourselves that our eyes might be open to seeing you that we would be quick to lift our praise to you, to call out for help, to notice the wonders that you do. Praise be to your holy name. We come, Lord, with real confidence. We come in faith believing. And we come in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our final hymn together.
congregation. Just a few announcements. That there's coffee right after this service and fellowship hall. And it's a great day for our annual meeting, which starts at 1045, and we all want to see everybody there, so please stay and be a part of that. There will be no midweek online study this week, but it will resume next Wednesday. And Advent, Advent begins next Sunday, and we'll have our Advent festival in two weeks, so pay attention to the bulletin. There will be details about that. And there will also be other notes in the bulletin, so please take and make... Uh, make uh, notes on your calendar. Out in the uh, foyer, there are these great Thanksgiving packages for children. I uh, wanted to show you what they look like, so if you have some children, grandchildren, friends, whatever it is, grab some of these things. They're pretty cool. So just wanted to let you know that, and we'll see you all in Fellowship Hall. Well, we started this morning, our call to worship came from Lamentations chapter 3, which is kind of an interesting name for a book, right? It's full of the reflections of Jeremiah the prophet, who watches as his country and the people that he loves are overrun by an outside malevolent force beyond their control. Stop me if this sounds familiar. And in the midst of this, Jeremiah is looking around and he sees what's happening and it grieves him. He is brought to tears on more than one occasion. And that is an entirely appropriate response when we face challenges and pressures and difficulties in our lives and see that happening in the lives of others. But what's so interesting with Jeremiah is that while he will grieve, while he will offer these laments, this is not his only gear. He also looks to the Lord and can call out and lift thanks and praise. Because of the Lord's great love, he says, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. His mercies never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Jeremiah knows that everything around him is falling apart. There are so many difficulties around him, so many challenges. And yet, he goes back to the Lord and says, I remember that your mercies are new every morning. And that's good because I need your mercies every morning for whatever this day holds. So as we move out into whatever lies ahead of us, we can see what's happening and acknowledge the difficulties. And for some of us, perhaps for many of us, grief has been exactly the right response. But it need not be the only way we respond, as legitimate as it is. We can also remember the Lord and lift up our thanks and praise to this one whose compassions continue to flow, whose mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Let's bear that in mind as we move through these days. Amen? Amen. The choir is going to sing us out with a blessing this morning. Mm -hmm. 